What's up everyone? This is Cedric Skysteady and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we've got another special guest that you've seen on this channel before. And so for those of you guys that don't know who he is, why don't you introduce yourself real quick. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Alex. I live in Korea. I run two channels. One's called Alex Sigrist and the other is called Mitch and Alex. Linked below. Definitely check them out. And so today what we're going to talk about is being a foreigner in Korea. Now, I released a video a couple of weeks back with another guest about being a foreigner in Korea with his experience and so today I thought it'd be interesting to get another experience here on the show. Now if you're new to this channel my name is Cedric and I create Korean culture related content and my experiences here in Korea I like to document and show you guys so make sure you check out the other videos I have on this channel and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Alright so let's go ahead and jump into this. So Alex tell us how long have you been in Korea? I've been in Korea for about nine and a half years now, going on 10 years, depending on when you watch this video. And I came from the United States right after I graduated. I, I moved here to become an English teacher from Ohio. Okay. For anyone Midwest, shout out. And uh, yeah, I haven't left Seoul. I've been in Seoul for nine and a half years. Wow, that's crazy. That's so that's actually crazy, yeah. That's, I, I might be giving away your age a little bit here, but that's about <laughs> a third of your life. I don't know when I graduated college. Maybe I'm one of them <laughs> smart kids. Y'all yeah, know. Maybe, Y'all know. Maybe. That's crazy. So so, so tell, tell us what brought you here in the first place. So 10 years. Oof. I want to know what kept you here, but first tell us how you got here. Right. Oh, um, good question. I came here with a university program, my business school had this program that went through East Asia, China, okay. Korea, Japan, Hawaii, mm. it was awesome. And I wanted to come back because I realized I didn't have a second language and I felt like I was missing something in college because I didn't do a semester, I did 10 days okay. in Korea. So I asked my professor who was Korean, so he suggested be an English teacher in Asia, why not try Korea? Um, there's a longer story, I used to live in Japan when I was really young, so I've always had a draw back to Asia, mm. and that that brought me on that program, and then that gave me the idea to be an English teacher in Korea, and ta-da, here I am. Okay. Ten wow, years awesome, later. Awesome. Awesome. Ten years here. Let us know how that experience has been, because what I found is there are a growing number of foreigners here in Korea, especially in recent years, right? Oh, yeah, and yeah. I, I'm sure you could speak to the amount of foreigners that were here when you first came versus now, but uh, tell us how how your experience has been overall as a foreigner, and then maybe we can, we can get into some of the details. How has it been as a foreigner? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's been awesome. I <laughs> I don't I loved it. I came in 2009, and for those of you who don't know what was happening then, that was the housing crisis, That's and right. a lot of the jobs for us millennials started just not being there. And I didn't go because of that, but I got here and got out at the exact right time. Right. Just when I graduated, I was lucky enough to look here instead of try and get a job that may or may not have been there. Uh, so when I came, not a lot of people had really started coming, but it was around 2010, 11, and 12 that a lot of people actually started coming. So when we right. first came, we were the first ones, um, not, not the early adopters, but, but like that second generation of people came in and posted everything on social media. Right, right. And then everyone who didn't have a job back at home was like, well, if Alex can do this and have fun, why don't we come here? And at the time, all you needed was a basic degree, didn't have to be an education. That was it. It was like, you, <laughs> you had to come from an English speaking country. Your degree okay. had to come from an English speaking country. And that was really the only requirement. Right. And so I came here, taught English at a public school, okay. middle school, for three years, and it was awesome. Right, and it's it's interesting because the path to coming here as a foreigner, to me, nine times out of ten seems to be through the English route, right. teaching English. And so yeah. how was that when you first came versus now? Has that changed? Is it, it's, yeah. has, do foreigners have different opportunities now versus back then? How was right. that? Uh, so back then, the best way to come was to be an English teacher because it was a job that gave you a visa that paid for your housing. Right. You know, I had no money when I came here. Uh, I was lucky enough to be out, no student debt, but I came here and I just started from zero and started earning money. And at the time, teaching was one of the main jobs here. Unless right. you had married a Korean and got that precious F visa, mm. you could really only teach. And so most people came then. And I ended up getting my visa through a point system later on, and I was able to do a lot of different jobs. I was lucky to get that early before everyone else started finding out about that. Right. And as those years have gone on, that's changed a little bit though, because nowadays 
a lot of people, especially the young kids, Generation Z now, mm. a lot of them are coming here having studied four years of Korean in college. I don't even know if we had more than two years right. back in my university when we did it. And now, you know, just look at the composition of students in those Korean American student associations that universities have is completely changed. It's more popular than it used to be. Uh, maybe it's because of K-pop and mm -hmm. Korean Wave and all that, but the people coming now, there is a good mix of English teachers, but those salaries haven't really gone up, so a lot of people are coming through school, through sure. other jobs, they're investing a lot in tech companies now, people are coming and just becoming waiters and servers in Itaewon, working for their friend's company. There's a lot of different right. ways to come, right? and so... The difference now is there's many avenues to get your foot in the door in Korea. Sure, that's sure. what's changed in nine years. Wow, wow, that's very insightful. Very insightful. You know, when I when I especially here in Seoul, when I go to Itaewon or even Hongdae, yeah. I see a lot of different entrepreneurs and business owners mm -hmm. who own different, say for example, restaurants. Right. And uh, they're they're foreigner owned, and it's it's quite crazy. Whereas I'm pretty sure ten years ago, and you can confirm this or not, that wasn't really the case. Not as many foreigner restaurants. No. Right. Foreign business owners. Those were mostly in Itaewon, and a lot of the times it was because they had married a Korean, mm. and the process of setting up a business was easier. Nowadays, the Global Center helps out people starting companies that you don't need a Korean necessarily. Right. Uh, we're trying to figure that out right now in the process of right. getting all that taken care of. But yeah, back then, and, and even still to today, but back then it was mostly, if you wanted to start a company, you did it with a Korean. And you didn't have as many protections if that Korean friend wasn't really your friend and was like, it's my company now. So right. it was a little bit more... I guess Americans, we'd say like Wild West back then. It was a little more difficult, a sure. little bit less regulated, uh, and less safe to do with that. But nowadays, especially because people want to set up, establish roots here, mm -hmm. more and more people are risking it a little more, like actually putting in the effort, the time to get the F visa, to start a company, to really put their roots into the ground. Right. I, I think it was around 2012 that that teacher wave peaked. Mm. And from that point, too, this is Gangnam style, you know. This is when Korea started really blowing up on people's news feeds, not just about North Korea, South Korea, and the tension there. This is when K-pop started getting a second look. And what happened, especially in America and probably in Europe and South America as well, mm. a lot of these countries ended up having the subcultures of Korea fans grow. Right. LA, New York, Atlanta, Chicago, go to, go to France and you see it, go to Brazil and you have these fandoms of all these K-pop bands. Those really started to grow from even in high school and sometimes late middle school. And when that happened, they would come to college and study Korean and they would make it their goal to get over here and do a semester at one of the right. big universities. I mean, it's, it's just, it was a slow transition, but looking back in nine years, it was it's kind of an explosion of interest not just for English teachers in Korea. Right, right. So that's very insightful. Now I, I want to kind of switch gears a little bit mm -hmm. and I want to talk about your personal experience here. Mm -hmm. um, again, everyone has different experiences as a foreigner here. Yes. I've been here only one year, but 99% of my experiences have been positive. I know that everyone can't say the same, whether yeah. they've been here for a year or 10 years, you know, yeah. like yourself. And so what are some of those challenges that you face? Because I feel like People out there who are curious about how the culture is in Korea for foreigners are, or right. for those who are actually in Korea, I feel like this can maybe help them, you know, maybe open sure. their eyes and, you know, just help them maybe overcome those challenges. What are some of those challenges you faced? Man, of course, uh, number one is the easy one. Everyone talks about it on all their YouTube channels. It's just language. That was tough in the beginning and, and still tough, don't right. get me wrong. but. The language problem wasn't just about not being able to order food or count the right number, you know, the change you needed to get back or whatever it was at the time. It really prevented you from going through a lot of doors, whether it was entertainment, being on TV, getting into radio, even if it's an English radio station, if the producers speak Korean, it's easier to communicate like that because that's entertainment. Mm -hmm. Getting better deals at banks. If you don't really know what you're looking for and you can't read anything and you don't have a Korean, it's hard to get better deals, uh, whether it's getting deals there or ordering online. If you didn't have language as your foundation, or at least you kept studying it, you couldn't 
really fully integrated in Korean society. Right. Even today, like, yeah, you can live in Itaewon, which is the foreigner district, but you can't fully be a part of Korean society if you don't learn the language. Right. Itaewon right. is like the American Chinatown, Koreatown. You can actually only speak Chinese or Korean and get by and never then be able to understand an American movie and vice versa. Mm -hmm. In Korea, if you want to really appreciate a Korean movie, you've got to know the subtleties of the language and not just rely on subtitles. Right. So it doesn't allow you to get fully immersed in the culture. That includes, by the way, making friends and getting business opportunities and interacting with people. The more I learn Korean, mm -hmm. the more they actually open their arms up, you know, open their arms to me. And so I would say right now, like you said, 99%, mm -hmm. I don't have any problem in awesome. Korea. Wow. Earlier, mm -hmm. maybe 90, like you know, there are problems that arise, going to the bank by yourself, feeling lonely, lots of things like that. Right, right. Awesome. So you've actually taken the time to really immerse yourself in the culture. Mm. And I personally know that you're you're fluent in Korean. And so you've taken the time, <laughs> you, you are. Getting close. You've, you've taken the time to Americans really- Americans can never be fluent, <laughs> never. <laughs> it, it seems. It seems so. <laughs> But you've definitely taken the time to study and uh, just to learn the language to the point where you can communicate with the average Korean, right? Mm. You have no issues getting by. Right. And so I think that's something that a lot of foreigners tend to lack here. Yeah. And I know that you've been here for a long time. You've probably came uh, at a time with other foreigners yeah. where you guys probably had the same baseline of Korean, which is probably zero. <laughs> but at a certain point, you probably saw yourself surpass them and, and, yeah. and they probably stayed the same. Yeah, yeah, this will help actually. I think the people that have done best in Korea, mm -hmm. is that even English? Doesn't matter. Yeah. They've done the best in Korea. They've gotten the best jobs or the best opportunities. It's the people that took long-term approaches. I, in the beginning, mm -hmm. I wasn't actually long-term in my thinking. I was like one year and out, but I really wanted to study Korean. And I stayed for two and three years. And so I, I kept studying and that actually built up this pathway that I, you know, led me till today, where my Korean got better, my opportunities were higher, I got into grad school, all that stuff in Korea. The people that plan in advance to get their Korean skills up, to get the F visa, mm -hmm. to set up a business, to advance in the English teaching world and teach at universities, they're the ones who really have the best times in Korea. They have the most fruitful experiences, and it's a meaningful experience. Right. So that's the one thing that if you get anything out of this video, if you come to a foreign country, or you come to Korea, have a long-term plan in mind, mm -hmm. unless you know you're done for a year. But all, even my That's friends, good. they That's were like, good. I might leave in a year, didn't study. I'm gonna leave the next year though, didn't study. I'm gonna leave the next, didn't study. Right. And so I think even just treat it like you are, have a long-term plan, you respect the culture, you wanna learn it, treat it like that. Right, right, and because just like with anything, what you put in is what you're gonna get out. So you put in a lot of effort, a lot of work, and a lot of respect yeah. into the yeah. culture. By doing that, then you're going to get that back. You're gonna get that respect from the culture yeah. back. Yo, Koreans are so good at that too. Like you just say the word, Anyong haseyo chonin Alex and say whatever mm -hmm. horrible accent you bring with you. And they're just impressed that yeah. you're learning. Right. And they're happy and they're open up and they're like, that's great. Absolutely. Let's talk more. Let's go get chicken and beer, you know? Right. And. This is also important. The more you put into Korean culture, like you said, the, really, they give so much back. Mm. Whether it's just a willingness to take you out to dinner, invite you into their home so you can have a traditional Korean experience during the holidays, whether it's job opportunities, whether it's dating, mm. the more you show that you've invested into their culture, the more they open their arms. Right. And that is another thing. If you come to Korea, you got to remember that. Right, I agree. So the takeaway seems to be just immersion, you know, immersing yourself yeah. into the culture. Doesn't mean you have to ignore your roots. I know some people are like, I'll never go to Itaewon, I don't never eat hamburgers and stuff like that. I only have Korean friends. You don't have mm -hmm. to do that, but make the effort. Right. You know, don't only hang out with your American or British or Brazilian or whatever friends that, you know, you're, wherever you're from. Make the effort to join a language exchange program to study with people, to just practice. Right, right. Very, very good, very good insight. Now, give us the top three things, your top favorite things about living in Korea, really quickly. Shotgun. Food. Food? Uh, food, I mean like, it's, their food's so good. I love mm -hmm. chicken in Korea, like whatever the chicken meal is, 
it's amazing. The only thing Americans do better at chicken is chicken wings. Aside from that, the soups and, and the fried chicken and the duck galbi yep. and the jim duck, amazing. Right. Like, absolutely incredible. Number two. Uh, I wonder if Mike said this one. I forget. Uh, I would say the fact that you can do so many things in a small space. Mm. One of the bummers of Korea is it's not like as huge and so you're limited in what you can do. But in that small space, when I'm comparing myself, like comparing Korea to Ohio, mm. in that small space, you've got mountains for hiking, for snowboarding. You've got beaches, you know, two and a half hour drive or on the KTX. You go south, down to Busan, you go to Gangneung, wherever it may be. You've got beaches. They do extreme sports now. You've got more paragliding. You've got people that are into, like I mentioned, snowboarding, uh, skateboarding on the Han River, the Han, the rivers, the parks, you can do picnics in, like everything is. Right, right, right. You can do a lot in a small space. And I still haven't explored all of Korea, and I am going to soon, uh, but I've done a lot of it, and there's just always something new and surprising. Right. And number three. I'm just going to go ahead and just stick with the lifestyle. Okay. And that lifestyle, which I'm going to probably hate in 10 years, is fast-paced soul life. Mm-hmm. But you have so many opportunities to meet people, to network, to go crazy and try to make as much money as you can or have a nice relaxed life as a teacher or running a business, whatever you want to do. It's one. It's maybe not the New York, maybe it's the, the LA of Asia. Like if, if Tokyo mm-hmm. maybe is New York, like LA has yeah. got so many opportunities yeah. for arts and entertainment as well. Right. And, you know, Hollywood and then there's Korea, there's K-pop and... Okay, dramas and everything that we do here with sure. YouTube is we try to build up the YouTube community in Korea for the foreigner side. This, I mean, we just freak, it's a studio. Right. And I don't know if this whole thing that we're doing together is going to work or it's just a big waste of money, but you know, we're not doing this in Ohio or Fayetteville, North Carolina, you know. Right. I don't think I would want to. No. I wouldn't, would I wouldn't be brave enough, brave enough to. And so yeah. you get this courage, I mean, that you hear in songs about you know, New York Empire State of Mind, right? Mm. You get this thing that just gives you life a little bit. Right. And it doesn't have to be super fast-paced. You can also take a slower lifestyle. But it's just opportunities of meeting people, of hanging out with cool people, Koreans or foreigners. Like, it's, it's exciting. Right. So last thing, and for those that are watching and uh, for it's those that thing. might be curious... Your best advice to any foreigner out there that's either living in Korea or who are thinking about coming to Korea to either visit or yeah. to live. The What's your best, best advice? Best advice is, I mean, I guess I talked about one of them earlier with language. I mean, language is mm. it's, it's just a part of it. But I think just immersion and... Mm-hmm. Not 100% immersion. You know, keep your roots. Right. Your, wherever you're from, that's awesome too. And you bring that to Korea and you add to this amazing international, I don't even know, melting pot, salad, salad bowl, whatever you want to call it. Right. That's cool too. Because Korea needs that. Korea, Korea needs that yeah. as well. But if you want to share your culture with Korea and have them listen, or you want to make a footprint in Korea and have them listen, or you want to be the top K-pop foreigner or TV star or... New English newspaper journalist or Korean, whatever it is, you got to take the first step. And that's learn Korean, learn the cultural norms, learn the mm-hmm. etiquette, make a lot of mistakes along the way, and be okay with making mistakes in Korean language. Be okay with making mistakes and not turning and facing away when you have a drink. Right. Make those mistakes and just... I don't know, it's so cheesy, but have fun. It's such a cool culture. If, right, right. If this is the kind of lifestyle that's interesting to you... Do that, right? And and try it for a year, two. I recommend two years. Try and get the language down. One year is not enough, but that, that's what I recommend. So I think we are going to end the video there. Hopefully, you guys found this conversation insightful. If you did, and you know anyone who's interested in coming to Korea to live, to visit, or you're in Korea, or anyone anyone like that, please share this video with share them. Share with I think, Send it out. Yes, yes. Send it out. I think it'll be very helpful and insightful. Check out Alex's channels. He's got two of them. He's got a Korean channel and also an English channel. Check them out. Links below. Again, if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that notification.
notification bell right beside it. Also, let us know what you thought about this conversation. If you have anything to add to this conversation about being a foreigner in Korea, leave it in the comments below. All right, guys, this won't be the last time you see Alex. As a matter of fact, get used to seeing his face a lot on this channel. We have a lot of cool <laughs> things planned. Anyways, we're gonna leave it at that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. And remember to always seize the day. Peace.